I'm Michelle Avis. Uh, hello, I'm Peter Coombs. And we're the instructors for the Essential Rainwater Harvesting online course. Today, we're answering your questions. This question came in from a student in another course. She posted it to our Facebook page. Let me read it to you, Peter. She says, I'm really concerned about pesticide and herbicide spray getting into my rainwater system if I were to install one. What is in products like Roundup and what could, would end up at our drinking water tap if my, if my system was well designed? I've heard that these products can have a particularly long half-life in soils. That's a good question, Michelle. Thank you for that. Um, most of the herbicides and pesticides that are available are fairly persistent in the environment, particularly soil profiles and, and in vegetation, as, as, your, as a, our former course member has commented. However, um, they're not that persistent or available to a correctly installed rainwater harvesting system. And I could quickly talk to the theory of that and talk to the real results from surveys we've done with our health departments in Australia. The reason for that is, say you have overspray of a particular pesticide, I won't pick on any variety, uh, and it falls on your roof, uh, the processes of exposure to light, drying UV light from the sun um, is actually kind of deteriorates those, those materials very rapidly. And then your correctly installed rainwater harvesting system is, is actually a, a treatment train, which we'll learn about in our course, a natural treatment train. So I'm not talking about all the, the whiz-bang things that people say you can buy for rainwater harvesting just talking about how the system installed properly has a, a natural treatment train. And it's very effective in this sort of case. However, the opportunity for overspray from these um, pesticides and fertilizers and so on to get from your, to survive on your roof and then actually travel through your system and end up at your drinking water tap is quite remote. First of all, it's degraded. Um, the contaminant is degraded and decomposed on the roof structure. It's it's changed. It's changed in, uh, and then it will enter your, whatever's left, if it's left, if it entered your rainwater storage by your your maybe your lift as diverter and so on and then that's the biofilms inside your rainwater storage are very aggressive on these sorts of materials um, the, the material on the bottom of your rainwater storage is people call sludge but it's a biofilm um, consumes any any of these residuals and you're very unlikely to have any significant concentration at all by the time it gets through your your pump and uh, processes through to your drinking water tap, which you would probably have a, a filter on your drinking water tap if you're using it for drinking, which we do in this house here. Now, um, Peter, the, the, the thought, sorry, I'm just gonna jump in because the thought that crosses my mind is there's, there's definitely a larger concern around pesticide and herbicide spray in rural properties. And those properties are more likely going to be on groundwater wells. So would the concern of pesticide and herbicide spray being in your groundwater not be, a, should it not be a bigger concern than it being in a properly designed rainwater harvesting system? I think that's a good question, Michelle. It's the, the next point I was going to get to is um, from our regional public health units when I was doing my PhD years ago. Uh, they've made the assumption that well, the only source of water literally in Australian rural areas is rainwater. So you'll have a farmhouse or a ranch house, maybe that you guys call it over there, in the middle of a paddock and you'll have the crop dusters flying over and with the 
you know, pesticides and so on, and the overspray would actually hit the roofs of the houses in the middle of the paddocks, obviously. And there was assumptions and alarm, and the public health units did lots of surveys, and they didn't find anything significant in the water column of the rainwater storages, but they actually found the um, some concentrations in the biofilm, the sludge in the bottom. So yeah, the, the process is very effective of, of removing these. Um, soil um, is a living thing with lots of, um, if it's well looked after, as you permaculture people would know, uh, it would be uh, soil is like a bioreactor. It has fantastic communities of uh, all sorts of microbes that have as a, a biology that keeps soil living and alive and it allows you to grow things and uh, so a healthy active soil structure has a um, biological structure that unless you overwhelm it with chemicals and pesticides will go a long way like the biofilm in the bottom of the rainwater harvesting system does to mitigate some of that. But if you've got, depending on your soil type, if there's a sort of a rapid flow through of after rainfall, you will, could build up residual storages of chemicals in groundwater and it doesn't go anywhere fast. Whereas in rainwater harvesting, it's the way the system operates means there's interaction with the the biofilm and the rainwater harvesting system of anything that gets through the roof system where, where these contaminants decompose, where the soil process could actually protect the contaminants. Um, and we have lots of cases around the world where contaminants from rural areas do end up being residual and persistent in groundwater systems. So we do have to be careful of that. Great. Thanks, Peter. Mm -hmm.